can see all the reporters here in the foyer of the House of Commons are gathered around this television monitor right now, which is showing them what's happening actually in the House of Commons, where there's a procedural wrangling going on at this hour because one of the parliamentary committees has been shut down when the Conservative chair said, that's it, I don't like the way this is going. He shut it down and walked out. So it's caused a bit of a crisis. We'll update you a bit later on that. But you know the Conservatives feeling their hormones these days. They are also saying over and over again, we are the party of law and order. We're the guys who are cleaning this country up. We're the ones you should look to to make sure that your life is safe. Well, reality may be a different story. And to give us a bit of that reality, I'm joined by Marlene Jennings. She is the critic here for this portfolio for the Liberal Party. You've been very involved in all of this law and order legislative agenda of the Conservatives. Let's tell the folks exactly what these guys accomplished because they were at us for a whole week on this, weren't they? What, what in fact transpired, Marlene? Well, it's quite interesting. One of the bills that the Conservatives campaigned on and then actually brought it in as legislation was the age of consent, raising it from 14 to 16. That was a major plank in their agenda of law and order. Liberals supported it. And so last October we said, we've got the numbers, we're ready to fast track it for you. Well, that wasn't good enough for the Conservatives. I think because they thought they were going to use it in an election campaign that would have unfolded in March sometime. Unfortunately for them, they didn't pull the plug for an election. Now it looks like no election. Yeah. But, interesting thing, it got into committee, we supported it in committee, it got back into the House at report stage, and once the report stage debate is finished, there's a vote. And initial, normally it's a voice vote. Yeah. And the Speaker says, I believe the nays have it, or I believe the yeas have it. Well, in this case, case Garth, when he asked who supported the bill, it was the Liberals, the Bloc, and the NDP that yelled yay. When he asked who is opposed to the bill, it was the Conservatives who yelled nay. The Speaker then said, I believe the nays have it. Yes, In yes. which case, under procedure, unless you have the other side that stands up in sufficient yes. numbers to force a recorded vote, vote yes. the bill dies it right lost, there. That's right, yeah. And had it not been for the Liberals standing up to yep. force a recorded vote, the Conservatives' own bill, that was a key of their electoral platform, would have died because they voted against well, it. Well, what does that tell you? That it's just all a giant political game? Is it that is. more important than actually getting this piece of legislation through? It is. That's pretty shocking. The, the Conservatives have been doing sloganeering. Political sloganeering, that's their law and order. It's just slogans. But when it comes to actual legislation that will actually make Canadians safer, that will ensure that our criminal justice system is actually more effective, it's a bunch of nonsense. It's empty air, literally. Let me give you another example, Bill C-35. That's reverse onus for bail right. for anyone who's accused of firearm uh, and offense. They have to prove they're innocent rather than being proved they're guilty to get bail, right? Exactly. Okay. okay. Right now, they don't get bail. Right. Even when it's the Crown that has to show beyond a reasonable doubt that they would be a danger to society if they were released on bail awaiting right. their trial. Yeah. So the Conservatives have made a big hoopla about this bill, reverse onus for bail. It changes absolutely nothing. The police have said so, the Crown prosecutors have said so, the Attorney Generals have said so. These are their normal allies for the law and order agenda. Mm -hmm. And they bring this bill in hoodwinking Canadians to think that it's actually going to change something and will actually make them safer. It will not make Canadians any safer than they are now. Because right now, if you've, if you've been accused of committing a crime with a firearm, you don't get bail. That's as simple as it gets. Last point. Do you think all of this was happening because the Conservatives were so convinced we were going to be in that election campaign? It's kind of knocked them right off oh, where they thought they would be? Is that the issue? It is. I think that when the Conservatives won the election, they actually thought that they would be able to call an election at the end of their year anniversary. And so their entire method of governing, their entire agenda was based on, we're going to front end enough 
enough bills in order to keep us governing until February 2007, and then we're going to pull the plug. And now they're scrambling. They have absolutely nothing on the order paper for the House of Commons to be dealing with. In committees, most committees have dealt with virtually every piece of legislation, government legislation that has come before them. They don't know what to do. They're incompetent. Literally, that's the nicest thing I can say about them. You sure you don't want to be a little blunter? <laughs> Marlene Jennings, thank you so much for being on MPTV. And thanks for watching.